Hey, 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 what's going on YouTube? And welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross, and I wanna thank you for clicking on this video today. I've got some real exciting news uh, that I wanna go over with you today. So um, I've made a bunch of videos about conditional access, but one thing about Microsoft, they are gonna continue providing me a way to create more content because they are always making changes and updates to the conditional access policies. So, which is good because we're just gonna continue to work on things and get more secure uh, for our environment because of all these new features that Microsoft is providing. So I am probably creating this video because I wanted to just walk and talk you through um, some of these new features. You may have been seeing them in the environment and you're like, what is this for? And I just wanna help everybody out. So there's two ways you can get to conditional access. Uh, we're gonna go through the Microsoft Entre way, but you can do the uh, Microsoft Azure portal if you wanted to do that as well. So if you will follow along with me, just go to entre.microsoft.com. And then once you get there, we're gonna come down here to our uh, identities. And then under identity, we're gonna hit protection. And then within here, we're gonna do conditional access. Now, when you first see conditional access, there are a couple of new features that they have here just on the overview page. So uh, if you click on getting started, you'll just see, you know, this is real uh, blank dashboard here. It just says manage policies and things of that nature. Um, over here, you have your overview. You have things like your coverage, which is here before. But then you have this new tab here, which is your monitoring preview. So this gives you a nice little uh, graphic showing you uh, signings by uh, continue, con conditional access results. Right, so down here you'll have total sign-ins, right here I have three, access granted, controls applied, access denied, controls applied, and then you have access granted, no policy applied. So you can go through this, you know, obviously mine is a test environment, so I'm not gonna have as much data coming through, but for you all, you may have a lot more things showing up uh, within your environment. Now, if I come over here to policies, what you're gonna see in policies is, um, I have all my policies down here. Um, those who have followed my page will know that I like to do the 1A, 2A, 3A, and so forth in this number system, but just because the way the policies come up, sometimes it's really hard to read it because they'll just come up there. Um, and pretty much, I mean, for the most part, they're in alphabetical order, but you see right here, M because it's lowercase is at the bottom. So I like to just number mine uh, just so that it's easier to read. So um, there's different things that we can do for these policies. So you can do a new policy from template. And these templates are great because they give you um, policies based on category. So over here, we have a secure foundation. So this is things that require multi-factor authentication for admins, secure and security uh, info registration, uh, require multi-factor uh, multi authentication for all users. You have a lot of different uh, templates that you can choose from. And as you go through all these, you have different things that apply to those categories. So this is more for zero trust. And sometimes you're seeing some uh, conditional access policies will show up in uh, these different uh, categories. Then you have stuff for remote work, you know, so like block legacy authentication. That's one that you should always have no matter what in your environment. I have another video where I talk about, I believe it's the top 10 or top eight conditional access policies that all admins should be using. Uh, so if you check my page, you can definitely uh, see that video as well. I would definitely recommend you watching that. There's a protect administrator. So this is gonna be anybody who has elevated rights within your organization. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have some policies around those rights uh, to make sure you're safeguarding those accounts because they have, uh, those accounts are high risk if they get compromised. And you have emergent threats and so forth. And then this is just all. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna to go to conditional access policies. I'm gonna come here to policies and I'm gonna create a new policy. So we're just gonna, it's gonna be a test policy to be completely frank with you. I'm just creating this before this video. So I'll just call this 4A dash test policy. And let me walk you through all this stuff that you that I find you really need to know. 
So over here on users, um, this is something that we've had all along. So right here, you could do, you're gonna include which users, if you wanna say all users, you can, or you can do select users, and then you have your exclude. So your exclude would be things like, you know, if you have like any kind of break glass accounts, you wanna make sure you're excluding that from the conditional access policies or any other service accounts that you may, uh, that you don't want any MFA for. So right here, you'll say select users. I'm just throwing something together here. And I'm just gonna grab a user. Let me see if I can find one. Let's do user 22 and I'll apply this policy to user 22. Okay, so that's good. So over here where it says target resources, now here is where you control um, access. What are they gonna be able to see, right? So you can say include all cloud apps or you could go ahead and you can say select the cloud apps. Um, and down here, you can get, you can choose this as well. Select what policy applies to. You can choose it to user um, actions or you can do authentication context. Right now, we're just gonna leave it to uh, cloud apps. I'll collect, I'll select an app. Let me see if I can just grab something. I might just do the OF365 portal. Okay, so we did that one. Let's hit select here. And then over here, we have network. So now this is something new, right? Well, the network used to be, which was called location, right? So what are you doing within network? What is this good for? So uh, basically with the network uh, tab that they have there, administrators can create policies that target specific network locations um, that signal along with other conditions in their decision-making process. They can include or uh, exclude these network locations as part of their policy configuration. So what you can do with that is you'll, you can include it based on things like, so if I come here, click on it, any location or trusted a network location, and I click select the network locations, you can do things based on IPs, based on countries, or any unknown areas that don't map to specific countries. Now, you some of the reasons why you would wanna enforce this is because uh, you wanna require MFA for users accessing a service when they're off the corporate network, that might be one of the reasons why, or you're blocking access from specific countries in your uh, from your organization that never operates from. So right here, I already have this allowed countries, right? So I can click on here and these are the allowed countries that you're allowed to uh, utilize within your environment in order to see the company information. So I already have a video showing how to do the uh, allowed countries. I'll come out of this and just go to where that is located so you can see exactly where this is at. So on the conditions, we have a two new ones. So I'm gonna walk through this um, with you so, so you have an understanding. So the first one we have up here is user risk. So basically administrators with access to ID protection can evaluate user risk as part of a conditional access policy. User risk represents the probability that a given identity or account is compromised. So right here, we can choose if it's high, medium, or low. So if I say low, then that's fine. Um, if over here for sign-in risk, uh, pretty much evaluates the sign-in risk as part of a conditional access policy. So I can choose this as well if I want to. For this case, I will not choose sign-in risk. So over here we have the new one, which is insider risk, which is preview. So what this does is admins with access to Microsoft Purview adaptive protection can incorporate risk signals from Microsoft Purview into conditional access policy decisions. Insider risk takes into account your data governance, data security, and risk and compliance configurations from Microsoft Purview. These signals are based on contextual factors like user behavior, historical patterns, and anomaly detection. So if I click on that, I have a different um, options here. So I can say select the risk levels that must be assigned to enforce this policy. I can say moderate, mi minor, um, I'm just gonna put minor for now. If I wanna put two, I can if I want to. I don't think you would really wanna do that. You wanna be very specific. So I'll leave it as minor uh, just for this demonstration. And then we have device platform. So this is, hey, which device platforms are allowed? So you can say any device platform or you can just say select it and you wanna just do Mac and Windows. It's totally up to you. I'll leave it as any device platform for this demonstration. So here are locations, if I try to click on it, it says no, network and locations determined by IP address. If I click on that, what it says is locations is moving, locations will become the network assignment. That's what it's talking about over here. And that's the same thing that we saw earlier. So I'll leave this the way it's included because I already have it here, no need to do anything there. And then now here we have client apps. 
This is control user access to target specific client applications. If I wanted to, this is where you would do things like, you know, um, legacy authentication. You don't want to allow that there. So I'll leave that the way it is. Um, we can filter for devices. So if you want to kind of have some type of filter in order for you to be able to um, utilize this conditional access policy or go through successfully, you can filter it out if you would want to. And down here we have authentication flows. So what is authentication flows? So it's in preview and what authentication flows control how your organization use certain authentication and authorization protocols and grants. These flows might provide a seamless experience to a device that might lack local input devices like shared devices or digital signage. Use this control to configure transfer methods like device code flow or authentication transfers. Okay, so if you're still confused, I will explain it a little bit better. So when it says these flows might provide seamless experience devices that might lack local input devices, is think of things like a conference room, right? So if you have a conference room, you're signing in, you might wanna say, you know, this can cause problems and this is an area where, you know, hackers can really get in because these devices need to authenticate, but they don't, they lack um, the input for authentication. So what you can do is you can do stuff based on uh, certain areas within your environment, like uh, your conference room. So you would get your IP, uh, for not your IP, but your subnets within your environment and say, okay, authentication flows are allowed only within this IP range. So that's a way of making sure that you are safeguarded against any type of attacks. So if I click on authentication flows, we have two options. This is device code flow and then there's authentication transfer, right? So let's figure out what these two mean. Uh, so device code flow used when signed into devices that might lack local input devices like shared devices or digital signage. Device code flow is a high risk authentication flow that might be used as part of a phishing attack or to access corporate resources on unmanaged devices. Hence what I was talking about earlier is talking about, you know, your sign ins or any device that you're using for meetings. Everybody's popping in and out of that room. You may want to make sure that you're able to sign in and go into a meeting and therefore you're not really have anything um, there for a specific user sign in, but you're using something like a service account to, to get people in so they can just start working. All right, so now we have authentication transfer. This is a new flow that offers a seamless way to transfer authenticated state from one device to another. For example, users could be presented with a QR code within the desktop version of Outlook that when scanned on their mobile device, transfer their authenticated state to the mobile device. So for this one, we'll leave that off. We really don't need this on for this one. Just kind of wanted to walk through it. And then what we'll do is we'll create it. Oh, what am I missing? Grant. So grant, I will grant access. I'll just require multi-factor authentication and I'll keep it on um, uh, report only mode. And finally down here, what we have is uh, sessions. So over here, sessions, you have the ability to allow uh, a certain time frame if you want to. So sign your frequencies, you have this here. Um, you also have things like persistent browser sessions, which I like to keep in its own conditional access policy. And you have a bunch of other things, which I'm not really going to go through these ones because these are these ones are already um, established. I really wanted to make this because I wanted to kind of go over the, the new items that are in preview mode. So we're going to create that one and we're going to keep that in report only mode. And I'll come back up here because I, know, I was mentioning earlier about the, the network locations. Uh, if you want to see how you can go about doing that, this is where you would uh, go to your name locations where you can have things like current location, countries locations, excuse me, IP range locations. And here you would now toggle off and you would call it a name and you'll say determine a uh, location by IP address our GPS coordinates, and then you would say include country, unknown countries and regions. And you can click here and now have a way of saying, okay, you know, these, everything that's checked off is, um, so this is the allowed countries, or you could do blocked countries. Now, if you were to click off on a lot of these countries and only allow, let's just say United States, London, or whoever, um, then those would be your blocked countries and anything that's checked off um, would not be able to lock into your Azure tenant slash M365 tenant. So that is pretty much it. Uh, this is uh, another update for conditional access policies. I've probably got about four or five videos already uh, just talking about uh, conditional access policies. 
So I hope uh, you find the information here uh, beneficial for you. Um, once again, my name is Kieran Tross. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.